So here's the deal. We just got the new patch today and I'm not going to talk about it in this video. I'm pretty upset about it, pretty disappointed. I expected a lot more and I feel like all we got was balance changes that are kind of questionable and a new revenue stream for the devs in monetizing the emotes to an extreme level, like 3,200 gold, 2,200 gold, whatever it is. I don't even know. It's crazy. It, it equates to like $30 American for an emote, a PNG that literally can be muted by your opponent so they don't see it. You're the only one seeing it. Whack, in my opinion. Um, but the rest is just kind of disappointing. I feel like we're on a disappointing streak and I don't really want to bring this video down because I am genuinely excited about the new cards. It's <laughs> Data mines are straight up my favorite part about Marvel Snap, content creation, just talking about the new stuff and especially this patch. It's it's my favorite part and i'm really happy to see some of these cars and these characters look like really fun batch even if i think this is actually one of the weaker months in a while uh, i'm still excited to break it down but if you do want to hear about my opinions on the patch the direction of marvel snap how i'm feeling about the game in general let me know let me know in the comments below like the video subscribe to the channel if this gets to like a thousand likes and there's enough support or something like that uh that want to hear my thoughts about the game then i'll go ahead and make a video and i understand if you don't want to because you just want to see the new stuff and that's totally cool and that's why i got this here we got the spotlight cash schedule for june uh, which is pretty exciting this was uh, made essentially by snap.fan, the data miners that do all this hard work, shout out to them, uh, where they kind of take the variants and characters that haven't been spotlight caches and they make a schedule. And I'm happy to say that the April one that was data mined in this fashion came to be true. It was 100% accurate. So we can actually fairly rely on this information. It is still tentative, it's still subject to change, uh, but I think it's a decent enough guideline for the june month if you want to kind of save for some of these cards or some of these brand new cards as you can see on the left there so uh yeah i also i kind of like that we're seeing some of the january and the february cards just goes to show that if you do end up passing on a card you can wait like two three four months and it will probably show up in a spot like cash later on and then you can just double down if you got the patience to wait that long so anyways that's the schedule right there feel free to take a screenshot uh and the new cards if you just want to dip but if you want to hear my thoughts about these new cards these data mine cards man let's get to it with the season pass card for june frontlining the eternals and that is gilgamesh so to my surprise gilgamesh is the season pass card i thought it was going to be focused around another card that we're going to get to because there seems to be card backs and all these other things more variants and stuff but hey we're going with gilgamesh that's fine by me so Gilgamesh will be the season pass for January. He's a 5-2 on reveal plus two power for each of your other cards in play. So that's across your entire side of the board, 12 uh, positions with increased power. So they must have gained power through some sort of method. So whatever their base was, slap on a little bit more. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of placing this in the middle. I can see this being a very good card, okay? Uh, it's also the season pass card, which typically seem to be very good. It just seems like maybe, I don't know, counterable or just like things could go wrong. That wouldn't be so great. All those cards that you buff get destroyed or just anything like that. You're relying on a few things to happen before you play Gilgamesh. Um, but ideally, geez, you can get this to crazy power totals. I'm thinking of like playing Killmonger to destroy Nova to get a big explosion. You hit like five cards that... 10 power for Gilgamesh, you have a 512. Probably in, in that case scenario, worth running. But even better in my mind is Mr. Negative. You flip this, it becomes a 2-5, and then anything else after that is going to get the bonus power. Now, I don't know 100%, we're going to have to find out later, if the negatively flipped cards ha that have increased power at that point in time, I'm looking at Ironheart being a 0-3, well, that's more than what it originally had, more than the base, so is that considered increased power is that going to register we'll have to find out we'll have to learn more but if that is the case that is amazing that's such a good combination mr negative and gilgamesh uh and then uh, and just think about the cards that mr negative runs anyways right a lot of them work in tandem with gilgamesh i'm thinking like wolfsbane ironheart these sorts of things so uh yeah it just seems like a very good fit in that deck regardless if those interactions work um and on top of that you got things like you know, Nakia, Okoye, um, Ironheart, like I said, like there's just a lot of cards that give power. And if they're giving power, then that's going to be great for Gilgamesh. Things I don't think are going to actually contribute to this ability is stuff like Blue Marvel just seems a little bit broken. You could fill the board like crazy, play Blue Marvel on five, play Gilgamesh on six, and you're going to have a crazy strong Gilgamesh probably, you know, just 
plus 15 power or something like that. So I don't think ongoing temporary aura buffs is actually going to register as increased power, but it could. It, it very well could. I mean, the wording is just weird. The wording has been weird lately on cards, I find. You can't really tell exactly what they're going for. So we'll learn more about this card. That will give a more definitive star rating. So for now, I'm just kind of being safe, putting them at three stars because it could be clunky. It could be really good. Just depends on the interactions at play here. So that's what I'm thinking about Gilgamesh. Let's get to the next one. All right, so I'm totally skipping the line here because I am so fired up about this card. And I know you guys are going to look at this and going to be like, what the heck, Drew? Two stars? Come on, man. Oh, I'm putting the two stars because I think that's like the actual power rating of this card but in terms of fun creativity just a card i'm happy to see be in marvel snap this is five this is ten this is this is all the good star ratings my cat is attacking me but yeah, man i'm just really excited about this card so a seven seven the first time we've ever seen a seven cost card in marvel snap very interesting right how do i play this card well we'll get to it uh so at the start of the game plus one max energy shuffle 12 random cards into your deck so <laughs> that's gonna be wild right uh obviously random cards typically not very good i would say synergies are uh very strong in marvel snap when you have cards that work together it usually ends up in a win when it's random cards you're looking at something like district x you ever play like a game of district x and it's like the stuff you draw are just useless it's like wow my opponent got good cards good curve i just got a bunch of like one cost stuff that's not doing anything or just you know just anti-synergistic cards um and then you know that could happen but at least you have the max energy gate so now you're looking at turn one you're gonna have two energy right away and turn six you're gonna have seven energy there's no downside necessarily other than the congestion that you're putting into your deck of just random shit, which just might not work or it might be amazing. It's hard, it's hard to tell, but it's not going to be consistent. You're, you're not going to be winning every single Arisham game because, you know, you're just drawing the nuts on repeat. It's just, that's just not going to happen. Um, and then in terms of synergies, there's like things we can do to better this situation. But again, it's not replacing our deck it's adding to it so we can build a deck for rsm but like you're going to have to deal with draws of being just those random cards <laughs> which might not be ideal so we can buff those cards we could use okoye and just give a whole board uh, not board wide but a deck wide buff which seems not too shabby we could also go discount all of those random cards with quinjet because they did not start in our deck we know this um from from thanos the way it used to work with thanos right and then they have to nerf it to make it minimum one uh, but as long as the cards are two or higher cost, the random cards that is, um, Quinjet's going to be great to discount them. But you never know if you're actually going to draw Quinjet, which makes it a little bit difficult. So I was thinking actually one of the best synergies in my opinion is Loki. So we already have the benefit of the max energy, plus one max energy. If we happen to draw Loki, hopefully fairly early enough, uh, let's say by turn three, well, we can play a four or five Loki on turn three with our max energy increase and all those cards that we've drawn, we probably don't necessarily want to play all that random shit. Well, now we can play Loki to transform it into hopefully better stuff, synergistic stuff from our opponent, which is then discounted, and we have the max energy surplus. So it's kind of a win-win in my in that situation. And if we can play out those cards, even better. You can, and it even works with Quinjet a little bit. So I could see that being not too shabby, but there's no way this is consistent. There's no way you're like, you, you, you could climb to infinite with this, sure, like people do it with Agatha. But like, I just don't think this is like one you're bringing to a tournament. You know what I'm saying? But this is a really fun deck. You're just looking to get like one game in a Marvel Snap. Man, you run this guy and you just have a good time. You just see what happens and laugh a little bit. But if you're trying to actually gain some cubes, maybe not the best. But I'm happy to see this card. Again, five, ten, ten stars out of, out of ten here on the fun scale. Happy to see you in the game. Uh, but two for your power level in my opinion all right let's get to the next one next up is thena and i'm gonna give her a five star rating i think this is the best card of this month in my opinion so she is a two one after each turn plus three power if you played exactly two cards so one of the most attractive parts of this card to me is that playing two cards is probably the average play in any given turn i would say if you took all of the turns in marvel snap all of the types of decks and you just put the, the an average of cards played per turn i feel like it would be two or three or, or maybe even one honestly but 
I feel like it'd be two. So the condition isn't so bad and the upside is amazing. So we do this once and you're playing her on turn two, right? If you can somehow find a way to like play Wasp and Thena on turn two, then bam, she's going to get three power right away. It's at the end of the turn. Uh, but let's say we just play Thena on turn two and then on turn three, we're able to play two cards. She's going to go from two one to two four. Not too bad. All right. We're getting to pretty good value territory. And if we just do it once more, in the remaining four turns of the game, or whatever it is, three, four, five, six, um, yeah, or it, with magic, you extend it to with limbo uh, to get an extra seventh turn. Yeah, you can find a way to do this again. You're at two seven stat line. We love two seven stat line. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. You got Maximus a two six, not a bad card, good in the right situation. If she can get to two seven, we're happy. Now, of course, there's counters. There's Shadow King that can absolutely wreck this card. Uh, if this gets to too high of power totals, in the case that we trigger this once again, it goes to a 210. It can get hit by Shang-Chi. So it's not invulnerable unless you tuck in this away with like an armor or a Cosmo, uh, which would actually be a really great combination as well. But uh, I just think it's generally good stats for a very easy to meet condition. And I know it's boring, but j historically, if you look back at like the last like five months of Marvel Snap, those cards win cubes. They're like cards with good power output for uh, little risk, little energy, uh, you know, not a very negative downside, do well. And that's why I'm giving this card five stars. She's just going to perform pretty well, in my opinion. Two cards is not hard to play. And then you can discount with Ravona. Like I said, Magic to extending the game. Kitty Pride is just a great uh, pair with Thena, I think, because it's just that easy card to play every turn with something else for not too expensive of a price tag. And again, like all you have to do is clear this condition twice, which come on, it, it really, like, I think you're doing that anyways. So uh, yeah, I think this is a very good card. Let's move on to the next one. And now we got Cersei. So this is a pretty wild card, it's certainly high on the fun factor, I, I think, but, uh, but I don't love it for competitiveness or just cube rates or anything like that. Okay, so 5-7 on reveal, transform your other cards here into random cards that cost one more, if able. Another little bugaboo for me with the wording, why are we not using if possible? We've used that on all the other cards, if able just seems weird to me anyways I, I maybe it's a character limit i don't know moving on cersei so i think this is not too shabby there's obviously a lot of great instances where you can use this let's use white tiger as an example white tiger on revealed triggers the tiger goes elsewhere and now we can use cersei to make white tiger herself relevant into a six drop in fact but the problem that i have is we have no idea what that six drop is going to be it could very well be destroyer and just destroy your entire board and then you lose and you literally spent turn five doing white tiger turn six doing cersei and then you lose the game you fell into a turn six trap so that's where i'm like ooh, okay that that might not be so great obviously that's the worst case scenario but you could even look at it like Arnim Zola maybe not being so great or Null not really doing anything if there's nothing destroyed that game or I don't know. There's there's a few. And then, then obviously there's the upside of Infinite pops out, Red Hulk pops out, uh, Hulk himself pops out. There's a lot of good upside. It's just, are you rolling the dice on that final turn? Are you willing to do that risk? That's where it gets a little bit difficult for me. And then you got things like Brood. So Brood's going to shoot out a bunch of Brood links. They all cost three. That's pretty great for Cersei. You play Cersei there. That's going to make three, three drops that you only spent three energy on into three, four drops, which could be amazing. But it also might not be amazing. Like, I don't know. You'd have to look at all the four drops. I'm sure there's more upside than there is downside but there's still that random element to it that's going to lead you to quite a few losses. This card reminds me a lot of Pixie. I think a lot of people are going to be excited and think this is going to be game breaking and it's going to do all these crazy things. And then it's going to come into the game and the lack of consistency is just going to stop it from being relevant in the meta. That's just how I feel about this card. It's going to have some crazy upside. It's going to have those amazing YouTube short moments or those Twitch clips or whatever. Uh, but it's, but is, I, is it going to happen every game? Probably not. Another cool one is anything with negative power. So the hood, um, the, the void seems like a great option. You turn a negative 10 void into a five cost. Doesn't even matter what it is at that point, really, because you've got upside for days after that. So yeah, I really like that combo. So there's, there's a lot of cards this could work with. Don't get me wrong. I'm sure there's other things. Like you could just do a flood board with squirrels or whatever and, and get them transformed to something higher. I guess I just get a 
little bit worried with the randomness. And it's the same with Arsham, right? Like just this randomness, lack of consistency makes it difficult to stick in a meta uh, when other decks are just more consistent and have synergistic strategies, <laughs> which is kind of important. All right, let's get to the next one. Next up is Makari, a 3-3 after the turn, weird terminology there, runs from your hand to a random location if possible now we're using the if possible tag what's up with that but anyways this card is the first card in a very long time i would say maybe five months that i've given one star um i usually don't do it because usually the cards have some application but i just don't see why i would run this in my deck i can't justify a deck spot in a game with only 12 cards for a free three power. That's essentially what this is, right? You're almost never playing this card. You're hoping to draw it and then it plays itself and that's it. That's that's all you're hoping out of Makari because that's what she's going to do. You're going to draw her on turn one, right? And then she's going to play herself literally on turn one. It's going to be at a random location and bam, you got three power. And maybe that's good in a world where we really care about priority. We wanted to get that priority going really quickly. You could look at like an old Adam Warlock as being in the synergy, but not anymore. Or old Elioth, not anymore. <laughs> but uh, maybe Moon Girl, you copy it and then, and then you got two. But I don't know how you're going to do that because she's going to jump out of the hand. I guess you do it literally on turn four. You'd play Moon Girl on turn four. You got Makari in hand. It's going to create two. They're free six power. Even then, I don't know. You're clogging your own board, dude. Three power isn't going to carry you past the clock. The, ju the junk deck is probably happy to see you play this because you just be like, oh, okay, that's one less spot they can play. Then the randomness of it is, is kind of nasty too because what if you're setting up at a location and then this just jumps there, runs there, whatever it's doing. I mean, this car, this car can run all it wants, but it can't run from my, from my star ratings. <laughs> Cause I, I don't know. I just don't see it. It's not even a played card. So it's not going to trigger Angela or even, I don't imagine it would trigger Elsa. There's just not a whole lot that I love here. I, I it just seems like, why am I running this? Why do I put this in my deck? I don't see it. I wouldn't pay 6,000 tokens for it. That's for sure. Maybe we're buffing it with blue Marvel. Maybe you hope it runs to the storm flooded location but we're all just hoping it's just a random location i don't know i don't love it i don't like it at all uh i don't think it's going to be a very good card and i would probably like to see it buff but you can't buff it too much because it is free power maybe four i don't know tough to say or maybe make it two two cost just in case you got to play it for some oddball reason i don't know there's a weird one for me. Uh, let's get to the last card. And last up is Fastos. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I tried looking it up. But 3-3 uh, three, three, on reveal. Give each card in your deck negative one cost or plus two power. So when you draw your next card after playing Fastos, it's either going to be cheaper or it's going to be buffed. And that seems pretty good. I like that a lot. It's it's interesting. There's a little bit of a random element seems to be the theme of this month. Um, but at the same time, both are good upside. Like either or you're probably happy with. I probably in most cases prefer the negative one cost because then we can play those cards a little more consistently. But if you get the power, whatever. So some of the synergies I was thinking uh, is in a Silver Surfer deck. That's my favorite one with this card. Not to hit Surfer necessarily, but Surfer buffs this card, but really because of the cards that silver surfer runs i'm thinking like brood right brood gets negative one cost that's great cheaper to play fantastic or plus two power even better four 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 on the brood links Ooh, that'd be pretty nice but when i think about this a little bit more i'm thinking some downsides it's kind of like okoye but later okoye gets way more value the earlier she's played hopefully on turn two she used to be a one cost and was broken so at two she's not really ever seen <laughs> giving plus one one power to your entire deck well let's say fastos here gives plus two to your entire deck it's not going to be the every card it's going to be i imagine the check is going to be one or the other i don't think it's going to be like all your cards are discounted by one i think it's it's like well, this card gets discounted by one the next card gets plus two power not necessarily in a row I, I there could be an instance where they all get negative one cost but it's going to be random anyways what i'm saying is what happens if the situation occurs where all the cards got plus two power it's kind of like playing okoye with a little more power upside but a little bit more expensive a little bit later because you're playing this card on turn three, most likely. And then you have turn four draw, turn five draw, and turn six draw. That's three cards that you can draw that hopefully get discounted. That's countered by Mobius and some other things too, right? But then also maybe hopefully got that plus two power. And then 
that's looking like decent enough value. If you can play those three cards, we could add that power up to be plus six. That's like a three nine in value, uh, plus potential other synergies, Black Panther or anything of the like. So yeah, I, I mean, that's why I'm giving them three stars. This is another one of those ones that I could see being pretty good, but also could be a little bit clunky like some of its predecessors and other cards that have been similar. So not too sure. And then actually it's pretty nuts in Thanos, right? So you know you're going to draw Thanos now in advance. So there's just time, there's stones left over. And then if you give a stone plus two power, that's great because then it's going to be at least like a one three or something like that. Or you make it free. There's no minimum of one tag on this discount. So you can make a stone a zero one or the power stone zero three or anything like that. That seems really good. I like this a lot with Thanos. Uh, Thanos or Surfer seem to be the two best builds for this card. Um, but this one's more interesting than a few of the others. I think uh, probably closer to a four-star card. Three or four is where I'm falling with that. But anyways, that is this patch's data mine cards. That's going to be June's cards that are going to be released and the spotlight schedule. Let me know what you think about these cards, which ones you're excited about, which ones um, that I kind of missed some key synergies. It happens, guys. I was working a full day and I just got back from work and threw this together. So I, I missed things. It happens, okay? Don't shoot don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> and if you want to hear me talk more about the patch and my feelings with Snap, let me know in the comments below. All right. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you guys next time.